The Rubik's Cube was the first of the type of puzzles known as twisty puzzles today. A polyhedron with movable sides where each piece had one or more coloured stickers and the goal was to return each side to having just one colour on each face. It was invented in 1974 and a limited release in Budapest began in 1977. Except it wasn't the first. Yes, it was the first to be mass produced, but it wasn't the first to be created or even patented. There are at least five other puzzles in a very similar fashion that were created before the cube, some astonishingly similar to Rubik's. Easily the most famous one is the Pyramix. Invented in 1971 by Uwe Meffert, the Pyramix wasn't patented until 10 years later after he saw how popular the Rubik's Cube was. While it was never as popular as the Cube, it was still wildly successful with 90 million allegedly being sold in the three years after it was introduced. So much so, in fact, that the puzzle has been an official WCA event since its inception, and there are many people dedicated to it. On the other hand, there were the other cubes. Four twisty puzzle mechanisms that were all invented before the Rubik's Cube, but none of which succeeded, and only one was really notable. In 1963, a maths teacher named William Gustafsson was granted a patent for a puzzle that could be considered a precursor to the 2x2. It was spherical, and used a mechanism where pieces hooked onto a central sphere to move the pieces around. However, when he tried to market the puzzle, he was rejected. By 80 different companies. Seven years later, in England, Frank Fox filed a patent for a similar puzzle. However, this was a 3x3 sphere, possibly the first created. Like Gustafsson's puzzle, this used hooks and grooves, but these were part of the pieces themselves and didn't hook into a central sphere. The main idea was a 3D tic-tac-toe game, but he mentioned that the pieces could be covered in colours or letters as well. A Japanese inventor named Terutoshi Ishige was granted a patent for a cube extremely similar to Rubik's in 1976. This cube was easily the closest, as it featured an internal spindle-like core with pieces held together by said core. Nothing else seems to have come of this, however, and it remained largely unknown. Then, there was Larry Nichols. A mechanical puzzle lover all his life, he was walking through his college campus one night in 1957, thinking about how to make the 15 puzzle more challenging. He realised that it was possible to create a cube with eight pieces that could rotate on three separate axes, and it would also be more symmetrical, with no missing piece. Two years later, he had managed to construct some preliminary models using magnets for his friends and roommates, who were fascinated. In 1968, while working at Moleculon Research Corporation, Nichols created a prototype that impressed the owner of the company, who suggested that they apply for a patent. In 1972, it was granted, and it also described the possibility of puzzles with a larger number of layers. Moleculon attempted to market the puzzle in the US, but failed, mainly because the magnets used in the puzzle made it too expensive to produce. Then, a few years later, Nichols saw the Rubik's Cube being marketed by Ideal. He was quick to contact them and point out that this was a potential patent infringement, but Ideal refused to acknowledge the patent at all. In 1982, Moleculon sued for $60 million. The ruling was initially in favour of Moleculon, but after CBS, which owned Ideal by then, filed an appeal, it was partially overturned. The 2x2 cube was considered an infringement, but the Rubik's Cube was not. As most of the other puzzles were never mass-produced, it's hard to imagine what they must have been like. What if the Pyramix was first, not the cube? What if Gustafsson's 2x2 ball was successful? Or if Larry Nichols had his cube produced? Would we be calling the 2x2 Nichols cube? We may never know.